الحمد لله رب العالمين العاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على ظالمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah. Bithilahi ta'ala, we want to look at and take some benefit from a tremendous book by the Alama, the Imam, Imam Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullahu ta'ala. And this book is Risaratu Ibn Qayyim uh, ila ihda ikhwanihi. is a book by Imam Ibn Qayyim where he wrote a letter to one of his brothers. Yeah, he wrote a letter to one of his brothers. Uh, there are so many benefits that really we can take and derive from this and the fact that Imam Ibn Qayyim, he took the time to record uh, or to write, we should say, he took the time to pin this advice to his brother. And this gives you uh, an example of some of the things that we should try to implement as Muslims, as we know that there are individuals who they are doing things that is not correct or they are in need of encouragement. Now, now as it relates to the situation of this particular um, this particular brother, we don't know whether it was this or that, um, as it doesn't come any any historical mention. But in any event, we are all in need of the likes of what was mentioned, Naam, either to encourage us or for those who are upon good, writing them and encourage them to do good is something that is good and something that we should do. And of course, those who have fallen into error, those who are doing things in which they should not be doing, but they have fallen into, then likewise, we should be writing them as well and giving them advice. So in any event, all of the believers, we need advice and we all benefit from the advice. Imam Ibn Qayyim, without further ado, he, he mentions, he, he starts this one by saying, he starts this letter by saying, Bismillah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Naam, he starts the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most gracious, the most merciful. And inshallah ta'ala, we're not going to get too too deep into the meaning of the Bismillah. As uh, the ulama, they have explained that in depth and in detail in other places. And likewise, it was mentioned and conveyed and what they have taught in other places in depth and in detail. So inshallah ta'ala, we're going to um, skip that part for now. And you can refer back to those other lessons, inshallah ta'ala, to get a more in-depth meaning and understanding of the Bismillah. In any event, he starts off the the book where he mentions, he says that Allah, al-mas'ul, al-marju, the ijaba that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who we ask and the one who we anticipate and we hope for his reward and that he answers it, yeah? that we hope that he answers the dua and the request. He says, and, and yuhsina ila al-akh, that he is good to the brother. Yeah? And the name of this brother is Ala din His name is Ala din um, and again, there's not a lot of historical mention of who Alauddin was, Naam. but in any event, this is the name of the person that Imam Ibn Qayyim, he wrote this letter unto him, this tremendous letter unto him. But he says, And yuhsina ila al-akh Alauddin, that he is good to the brother uh, Alauddin fi dunya wal akhirah. And then we ask that Allah Ta'ala is good to the brother Alauddin in this world and in the next. Naam. And I want you just to reflect upon the usloob, reflect upon how he is addressing his brother. And that he benefits by way of him. And that he makes him blessed wherever he may be. He makes him blessed wherever it is he may be. This dua, subhanallah, is tremendous. Bila shaku bila raib. The fadilah to Shaykh, Shaykh Sulaiman al Ruhaili, Hadhullahu Ta'ala, he mentions in his explanation of this tremendous letter. He says, Bada ibn Qayyim, 
He said that Imam Ibn Qayyim, he began, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he began having his nasiha, he began this advice. Naam, this advice, al akhawiya this brotherly advice. He began this brotherly advice. Wa hadi hi risala al akhawiya bi'ibara mal'uha, yani mal'uha al rifq. He began this brotherly advice with, yani this, this letter of brotherly advice. With statements that are filled with gentleness and ease. With statements that are filled with gentleness and with ease. And that show yani hubbil khayri lil mansuh. And expressions that clearly articulate and express the love for good for the one who is being advised. And this is something that we need to reflect on when we advise others. Is that it has to be an advice that is given which clearly shows and expresses that we love for the individual who we are advising good. That we want good to reach them. That this is an advice that is from the heart. This is an advice from a good place. We're not advising them because we want to rebuke them or we're not advising them because we want for them evil. But we advise them because we want for them good. Damn, and this is something that is missing in our time. Many people will come across and say, well, I'm just advising. But the manner of the advice was so harsh. It was so rough. It was so tough that no one understands that from you. You know, it's almost as if the advice becomes an opportunity to strongly criticize some person, uh, someone as if this is what they were waiting for. They were just waiting for an opportunity, waiting for an opening so they can really cut into a person. But now under the guise of, oh, this is just advice. You know, I'm just advising, but it doesn't, it doesn't feel like advice. It doesn't come across as advice. It comes across as this person, they intend for you malice. It comes across as this person, they are taking uh, uh, pleasure in your misfortune, you know, to the end of it. And if we are brothers, this is not how we're supposed to interact and deal with one another. This is if, if sisters are being sincere unto one another. You know, this is not how sisters are to interact with one another, but it should come across from a, from a good place and it should be clearly seen that we want good and love for a person. And you see this here from just the words that he Nuqayyim he is mentioning and the manner that he is talking to him. You see, and that he's writing unto him, you see that he loves for he loves his brother and he and he loves for him uh to to be upon good and he loves for him that good will reach him. Naam, and this is where it comes from a good place. Wahadihi min hajr al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this was the methodology of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I want you to really pay attention to this. Because some people they have this understanding that the methodology of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is one that is rough and is tough. Naam, is one that is, is rough and is tough. And the reality of it is, is that the origin of the of the methodology of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that it is one of ease. It is one of lean. Naam is one of ease. It's not one that is rough and is tough. Now, of course, there is a time and there is a place you need to be rough and tough. Okay. There are certain situations that necessitate shidda. It necessitates one is rough. Naam. And one is harsh. Some situations necessitate that. But that is not the origin. The origin is that one is easy and they are inviting. When you have to be rough and tough, then you have to be rough and tough. Now, I'm just like when you interact with your children, with your children, your origin should be is that you're easygoing and you're loving with your children. Now, there comes some times where you have to reprimand them. There comes some times where you may have to spank them and discipline them. Now, and it's needs and doing those times is when you're rough and tough. But this is not the origin. You don't wake up in the morning time and the first thing you do is you yelling and you screaming and you, you know, no, 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 that's not the origin. That comes, that comes across and you utilize that when it needs to be utilized. But outside of that, no, you interact with them in a very loving manner. So this was the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that he was easy going. Now he was easy going and when he needed to be rough, then he was rough, but he was easy going. This was the the default, and this should be the default of the people of the Sunnah, especially those who are saying that they are upon the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, especially those who say that they are ethari salafi. This should be their origin that they're easy going. They shouldn't be known to be people who was rough and tough. But unfortunately, this is 
yani what has become known on um the brothers and the sisters is that they are people who are rough and tough why because they are people who have been reared upon a lack of wisdom and upon ignorance and upon individuals who have Allah musta'an who knows where they getting this weird stuff from but they have misappropriated many things and taken things outside of their proper context due to their lack of understanding and gross ignorance that they encourage and make it seem as if being rough and tough is from what it means to be a salafi sunni athari and that's not correct the origin is that individuals they are upon gentleness because you're supposed to be inviting towards something so when you invite towards something you have to be inviting you don't invite towards something while you're being repulsive that that's just it's an oxymoron you going to you going to repulsively invite doesn't make sense anyway ala kulli hal this was the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam naam wa hadha the sheikh mentions wa hadha minhaj an-nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam naam wa man sara ala sunnatihi and this is the sunnah of those who they tread upon his way min ahli al-'ilm from the people of knowledge qala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mukhatiban لنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا خاطبا نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم ان الله تعالى he says addressing his prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم speaking to him directly Allah تعالى he says فبما رحمة من الله and it was by the mercy of Allah لنت لهم that you have been easy unto them نعم is by the mercy of Allah that you have been easy going unto them and this and this ayah can be found in surah آل عمران in his verse 159 وهذه the sheikh he says فهذه الرحمة من الله this mercy is from Allah سبحانه وتعالى so when you find the people of علم the people of knowledge وطلبة العلم and the students of the people of knowledge when you find that they are being merciful to the people and forbearing with them so on and so forth this is this is mercy that is from Allah سبحانه وتعالى فبسبب رحمة الله فبسبب الرحمة من الله سبحانه وتعالى لنت لهم and Allah تعالى is telling the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that it is by a mercy that is from Allah this is the reason that you have been merciful and easy going unto them فالنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا نلهم so the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he was easy going unto them فلين الأخ لإخوانه من رحمة الله تعالى به وبإخوانه and that an individual is merciful to his brothers then this is a mercy from Allah for the individual himself and also a mercy from Allah for his brothers and sisters نعم so us being merciful and easy going with the believers then this is the mercy that Allah Ta'ala has bestowed upon us and it is a mercy that Allah Ta'ala has bestowed upon the believers and i really want the people of the sunnah to understand this so that thus they adorn themselves with this outstanding characteristic of being easy going to the believers and so much so that it 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 is known upon it uh, known upon them let it be known upon you that you are a person who they are easy going you are a person who you are easy going but at the same time you are a person then when you have to get rough and tough then you unapologetically get rough and tough let it be known about you that you're a person who overall you are easy going but at the same time you don't play no games now and this is the way this is the way of the believers when you look at the sahaba this is what you see from them they were easy going but at the same time they didn't play no games now so don't don't, don't play games but that don't mean you rough and tough all the time and you just become overbearing no but we have to be easy with the people fa innahu ma jama an nas and i want you to really understand this naam because verily there is nothing that's going to bring the people together mithl rahmah naam fi sunnah there's nothing that's going to bring and gather the people together more than what being merciful upon the sunnah fa idha kana an nas ala sunnah the people upon the sunnah وبنيت امورهم على الرحمه واللين والرفق اجتمعوا على الخير وحصلوا خيرا عظيما when the people they build their following and their practice of the sunnah and their affairs upon mercy upon being gentle upon being easy going and gentle then you will find that this will bring them together they will come together upon good and they will come and they would and they will achieve a great good they will achieve a great good 
And this is important. This is from the da'wah. This is how we, we, we bring the people together. By what? Being upon the sunnah. Naam. We don't waver when it comes to being upon the sunnah. We do not compromise our, um, our ethics. We do not compromise our methodology. We do not compromise when it comes to our aqid and to our creed. We do not compromise when it comes to the manner in which we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do not compromise when it comes to implementing the sunnah and being salafi upon salafiyya. We do not compromise. But at the same time, we are merciful. We are easygoing and we are gentle. When a person is upon this and they're calling the people to what is correct and with mercy, with ease, with gentleness, so on and so forth, this will gather the people together and you will find great good coming from it. Now, if you were to reflect on some of the mishaps of the Salafis and people who claim Salafiyya, because sometimes the mishap is from, is from the Salafis themselves. Yes, it's from actual Salafis who, due to ignorance, mistakes, faults, what have you, they fall into error. Damn. So mishap, it occurs from that. No, okay? Okay? But also, let's just be real about it, there are also people who claim to be Salafi, but they're not really Salafi. And mishaps comes due to them and their ignorance and their foolishness. Damn. So how many people you have from the Khawarij, from the Hadadiyya, who claim to be Salafi, who say they're Salafi, but in actuality, they are not Salafi. And they come with this rough and tough and, you know, uh, 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 overboard behavior and things of this nature due to their ignorance, due to the crookedness inside of their methodology. And people mistake that for Salafi, but it's not Salafi. They mistake that for Salafi because they say they're Salafi, but that's not from Salafi. This is not from Salafi. But what is from Salafi is that which is, is in compliance to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, as, as understood by the self of the Ummah. Now, and a person say, well, what's the proof? We had the ayah right here from Surah Ali Imran, verse 159. Allah Ta'ala says, min Allah And it was by the mercy from Allah that you were easy with them. That, is, that not, is that verse not clear? Okay. You want some more dalil? Ja'an Abi Musa al-Ash'ani radiyallahu ta'ala anhu annahu lamma ba'athahu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa mu'adha min al-jabal qala lahuma that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he sent Abu Musa al-Ash'ani when he sent Abu Musa al-Ash'ani and Mu'adh bin Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he sent them to Yemen to give da'wah the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, listen to what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said unto them. What was his directives unto them, his direction to them when they go and give da'wah to the people? Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Yassira wa la tu'assira. He said, be easy going. Don't be difficult. When you both go to give the people da'wah there and to call them to Islam and call them to being upon kitab and sunnah, be easy, both of you, be easy, and both of you, do not be difficult. Don't be difficult. Don't be rough, right? وَبَشِّرَا وَلَا تُنَفِّرَا And both of you, be inviting, and let not near one of you be repulsive and push people away, okay? The Prophet Wasallam he said unto both of them, he said, he said, and be compliant, both of you, and don't differ. Let not near one of you differ. Now, I want you just to reflect on this. If the people of the Sunnah were to apply this hadith to those who they are calling, they're easy, not difficult inviting they don't repulse them away they're compliant they do not differ meaning they're compliant upon haq they do not differ with each other yani in a manner that is not justified huh and this is how they interact with the people imagine how far the da'wah will go right all right now i want you to reflect on this imagine if they interacted with each other like this easy not difficult inviting not repulsing each other away 
being compliant, not differing. Imagine this. You understand? And I just want you to reflect on this, right? Because let me let me give you an example. Let me give you an example to show you how things have been misappropriated and not in the right place. If you have a brother or a sister who, when it has been shown that they have fallen into error, that they correct themselves, they adjust, they pivot, they retract. Now, and this is known for them that this, this is what they have done. That when things are clearly explained to them in a good way, even in a bad way. But when it's clearly explained to them and, and the truth is made known clear to them, that they change. That they repent. That they turn things around. Why would you ever want to cut off a limb like that? Why would you ever want to sever a limb like that? Why would you ever want to deem and paint this brother or sister as being unreasonable, unworkable, right? Um, and therefore, we just got to get rid of them, so on and so forth. Of course, the answer would be you wouldn't do that unless you, unless you had something else in mind. Yes, you had an agenda that was outside of the truth. If you had a separate agenda outside of the truth and, and your only agenda was really just to get rid of them and to find any excuse by way in which to drop them and get rid of them, then okay, yeah. Then it makes sense. But that's not from Salafiyya. That's not from the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's not what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught the Sahaba. That, that's not what we see here. That's not what Allah Ta'ala teaches us in the Quran. No, not at all. If a person is open to the truth and, and, and to rectification, then what? Then you rectify. Yeah, subhanAllah. That's like cutting off a limb that, that just needs medicine. The limb needs medicine. But you say, no, nah, I'm just going to cut it off. Cut it all off. Yeah, subhanAllah. Nobody would do that in their right mind. Nobody would do that in their right mind. Nobody upon the right methodology would be acting like that. No. But you find people who who claim Salafiyya, but who on actual, actuality from the Hadadiyya, from the Khawarij, yes, this is how they are. But this is not those who are truly upon the way of the Prophet them. They are because this is not in line to what we see here from uh, the teachings of the book and the teachings of the Sunnah. Naam. Uh, and, and again, and I'm gonna I'm gonna reiterate. We're talking about people who they have shown that they would rectify what needs to be rectified. They will repent. They would retract. Huh? But I'm not talking about a person that is obstinate upon bid'ah. That is obstinate upon innovation. That's different. Of course, it's different. We're not talking about them. We're not talking about the person who was obstinate upon bid'ah. So we're not talking about that. We're talking about a person that will. Benefit from the advice when they are advised. The person that would re that would retract and 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 um, pivot and change their position and so on and so forth when it is shown to them that they are wrong. In any event, this is the advice of the Prophet Sallallahu Be easy, don't be difficult. Be inviting, don't be repulsive. Be com be compliant with one another and do not differ with with, with each other. Man, imagine if we were to implement that. How far the dawah it will spread and how far the dawah it will go. Ya yeah, subhanallah. The, the Shaykh he mentions, he says, Hadihi wasiyah to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the wasila, this is the wasiyah, excuse me. This is the advice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the advice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Walihada, walidhalika kana min sunni' ulama rahimahumullahu ta'ala taqdimu dua wa idhar, yani wa idhar lukhair lil mansuh. عند ال عند النصيحة فيقولون مثلا نعم فيقولون مثلا اعلم رحمك الله ويقولون على سبيل المثال اعلم وفقني الله وإياكم إلى الخير ونحو ذلك الشيء he mentions نعم he says is that from the uh, from the way of the علماء may Allah Taala have mercy upon them تقديم الدعاء that they would um, they would begin their dua by making it clear that they intend good for the person that they were given the siha to or they will begin their call by making it clear that they intend good by the person who they given this nasiha to now by and and, and, uh, and they would do this by by making dua for them they would do this by making what dua for them so they would say for your kuluna method and they would say rahimukullah. no may allah have mercy upon you will your kuluna and they also, they used to say, اعلم وفقني الله وإياك إلى الخير. And they would say, may Allah, no, may Allah give me and you the success in doing good. 
in that which is similar unto it. This is the way of the ulama. This is the way of the ulama rabbaniyin, rabbaniyun. This is the way of those ulama who rear the people upon that which is correct. Naam. So pay, pay very close attention and stick to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and stick to the scholars of our era and of those who have come before and be very wary of those who constantly they're speaking bad about the ulama. So anyone who would hear the likes of this address and say, who's saying that? Who? Sheikh Suleiman al ruhaili Oh no, don't take ilm from him because of X, Y, and Z. Don't take ilm from him because of X, Y, and Z. La, ya, 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 ya. La, la, ya, sheikh. No, don't do that. La, ya, akhi. La, ya, ukhti. No, don't do that. But rather be of those who implement that in which was mentioned from the book, that which, which was mentioned from the sunnah, that which, which was mentioned from the way of the salaf of this ummah, because that's what it means to be sunni salafi. This is what it means to be what? Sunni salafi. Bithillahi ta'ala. This is just a, 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 a first of many uh, classes where we will reflect upon the some benefits that are extracted from this tremendous book, from this tremendous letter in which Imam Ibn Qayyim, he wrote to one of his brothers. So, bithillahi ta'ala, nattafi bihadha al-qadar fa illa al-liqa until the next time we meet. Astawdi'akumullah wa jazakumullahu khayra.